Hello friends and welcome back. Welcome to Venice Sports Shack. And welcome back to the most inconsistent sports card channel on YouTube. Today we're going to be discussing PSA and the new rules. So as always stand up, stretch out, because away we go. Alright guys. Anytime PSA makes rules about card cleaning, I know when they put that designation of N7 said they were going to use it. I explained to you that I was continually using the block submitter to try to see if uh, I could see any of that. And recently, PSA has put new rules out. Uh, they put out a list of rules. They have updated them, revised them like I told you a long time ago when I talked to Jackie Curiel. They have a team of lawyers, and they are always, always trying to cover their butt. But first, before we get into it, first contest, Paul's Stupid Contest. Don't forget, September, comment 1 to 500 down below. Remember the video you commented in, because you'll have to tell me we're giving away the rack pack and the t-shirt. So if you're interested in that, comment down below. Also, we're pushing for 3,000 subscribers. Guys, remember, smash the like button. Subscribe if you have it. But let's get into today's topic. Um, I wanted to talk about PSA, the new rules. Uh, someone asked me last week, what did I think was best? Uh, getting grades if I sent them in bulk submitter or if I sent them in directly to PSA, which which uh, was a better chance of getting better grades, PSA 10s or whatnot. So I'm going to kind of discuss that, go over some things I've been talking about PSA over the last few weeks, and uh, get to the new rules. The first one, go ahead and hit these cards. I know I showed these on a video not too long ago. We have six cards. I sent these directly in. Did not go through the box of better. I got a seven, an eight. Seven. They're real tough on these paper cards with color. Real tough. Then I got four tens. I got this CJ Stroud Optic. Jefferson or Herbert. Justin Herbert. Lamar Jackson. Josh Allen. I have 58. 58 cards still coming. We're going to go over them. They're all with the bulk submitter. Um. What I have found out when I send my cards to PSA directly, a lot of people think if you send them through the bulk submitter, you get better grades. My experience is I get better grades when I send them directly to PSA myself. And you ask why? This is why I think. I do not clean my cards. I don't polish them, trim them, nothing. I send them to the bulk submitter. If you've seen some of my old videos, I show you. No review on my cards. My box submitter calls it reviews uh, when they mess with cards. You got a review, first level, second level review. I don't know what they do. I've never used that service. Just submitted them and keeping track and photos and uh, getting them back is just easier for me. But when you send cards up and you don't alter them and you don't clean them and they go with a bulk submission that has clean cards i think one of the problems with my cards is they don't look as shiny the surfaces don't look as clean uh corners aren't as sharp and laid down i know they have these tools where they push down edges that are cut bad things and mine will stand out so i think from a bulk submitting standpoint if you do not clean or alter your cards you probably want to send them through directly to PSA because when that grader gets your cards he has your cards and your cards only and it's not mixed in with 20 40 other cards that have been cleaned and will make yours look worse now if you're only sending in one or two cards a month send them in with the box of matter is cheaper shipping's cheaper just all around would do it but if you're asking me in which I think I am going to, at the first of the year, start sending everything in directly to PSA. I think if you send them directly into PSA and pick out the best cards you can, you will get the highest percentage grades of 10 directly. Now remember, PSA has that membership. So if you're looking to sell cards and do a lot of grading, join the membership, get the discount. 
I truly believe send in your cards. Now I'm going to keep using the bulk submitter on occasion. Like I said, they're friends of mine. And I also want to keep in touch, see what, uh, if there are any of these alteration uh, labels given out to cards. Uh, bring that up also because PSA has made a new rule about cleaning cards. They uh, have now are stating that there's a couple more money grabs and I always love this from PSA. You send up cards and if you know that they've been altered or cleaned or trend or anything, uh, they'll send your cards back but they are keeping your money. Normally when you send out a card and it's uh, missized or something, they send the card back and they don't keep your money. Now PSA is keeping your money. Uh, so that was one of the rules about money. The other rule was something when they grade them and they uh, upcharted them, you're automatically giving them up to like $500 to take out of your account. Pre-authorization. I wanted to bring up that rule, guys, because I know I told you uh, that Michael Osaki, uh, I tried to get a hold of him, tried to get credentials, tried to get uh, PSA's, you know, insurance. They should have errors and omission insurance covering their high-end cards, you know, how they upcharge you. Well, the guy who appraises those has no license, and I told you guys a couple weeks ago, 10 days ago, 12 days ago, I had emailed him, tried to get verifications of his license. He does not have a certification license, but I wanted to put mine up. I have mine up in my office because I have to legally, but I'm going to put it down here just because I wanted to remind you guys that PSA does not have a certified residential and I know you guys are saying, well, yours is real estate. No, mine is a certified residential appraisal license, which means that is the second highest license in the land, which means I can appraise sports card. That's, that's beneath me. It's like an auctioneer. It's beneath me. I can do what's below me. Uh, also, I want to tell you guys, when you have a business and you are appraising properties or houses or cars or cards or anything, you should have, when you're reasonable and uh, reliable and you don't make mistakes and you take out the excuses of human error, you have insurance and you have companies that will insure you. It's called errors and omissions. That way, if you do make a mistake, you're covered. Uh, I wanted to bring that up. PSA cannot get E&O insurance. I have not seen any type of insurance that covers them in the way that this E&O insurance covers me. Why does that matter? They can put any value they want on your card. They can upcharge you anything they want. They have a gentleman, Michael Osaki, that's appraising your cards that has no credentials. I'm telling you guys, and I told you this a long time ago in my videos, if you're out there getting insurance and relying on PSA, trust me, don't, because if your insurance agency ever contacts me, I've already told you how true value is determined. So I wanted to talk about that today, guys. PSA. If you're going to use them just to sell cards, flip cards, great. Have at it. That's your highest return on value for sales. Uh, if you're out there looking to buy a big expensive card, don't. Buy a raw card. Have it graded. The value in PSA is not reliable. They don't have insurance to back it. They don't have uh, certified appraisers telling you what the value of your cards are. They're just winging it. Just like today on Wing It Wednesday. So, guys, that's my spiel for today. But as always, comment down below. Tell me what you think. Peace. Have a super great day. If you want a company that can't get insurance and doesn't have licensed freezers? I hope not. But remember, guys, why did we really come here? That's right.